Hello and welcome to another installment of Comparative Reasoning. I'm your host, Cedric Kennedy, and I want to talk about Derek Chauvin, who was found guilty on all three counts for the murder of George Floyd. Um, right-wing media showing how racist they are. Right-wingers are showing how racist they are. Apathetic people who are saying certain things are showing how racist they are. Now it could turn a lot of people off of what I'm saying, but here's the thing. While they are reporting this, the news outlet, I was listening to Ring of Fire. You can go listen to it. Uh, Farron Cousins plays it. It's called, the title of his video is called Right Wing Media Disgusted by Chauvin's Guilty Verdict. And Farron Cousins plays it. The people on that news broadcast are listening to the verdict. And the verdict, you know, the, the crowd, not the word verdict, but the crowd, they're cheering. They are cheering in the streets that justice was done. And it's not even true justice. Why? Because true justice would bring back the wrong bring them back to life true justice would make sure by all means unarmed people in general are not killed whether they were armed during a chase when they are unarmed when they stop when you finally stop them and they are unarmed you can't kill them you just can't execute them but when they said this cheering people the cheering people, they called them an angry mob. They called cheering for joy black people an angry mob. It's sort of like that old thing that no matter what a black woman does, if she stands up for herself, she's the angry black woman. No matter what. And that's with black men, let alone any other color out there. It's no, it's no different than if the black man stands up for himself in that type of environment of employment that he's the angry black man when he voices a grievance he can't do anything people black people on the job are usually scared and terrified to say if anything is going wrong because they will be seen as that insurrectionist which segues into a black mob being called a mob thugs angry you know, because these people, not a mob, these protesters slash former protesters, how they are cheering. But those white people that invaded the Capitol weren't angry. They were patriots. Those white people that had guns, handcuffs, zip ties, nooses, and a plan of, as weak as it was, a plan of action to execute any officials caught they were patriots they were justice seekers they were you know the backbone of america they were fathers and mothers they were workers they were people that wanted justice in this country and they were going to get it no matter what that's who they were but black people who abide by the law and even do what the law tells them and get gunned down for it they're seen as aggressive charging thugs that look like demons you know they are women who get shot in their home with people without a warrant without uniform and, not, and that woman not spoken of they are 16 year old women that get gunned down. They are young women of color who get molested and raped by the cops. These cops extend even into ICE who will rape a six year old girl and then have her sign her name saying it's her fault that she did not ward them away and say no. 
it's it's the United States putting people in cages because they are not natural born citizens. However, they are people looking for citizenship. We call ourselves the greatest country on the planet as we detain people for seeking to be a part of that greatness. We deny people the ability to sign up for that greatness. We separate them from their families and we rape them trying to seek that greatness. And those who are here, those who were born here, grandfathered here from slavery or colonialization, you know, these people that get, well, you know, marginalized, discriminated, segregated, beat down, bullied, murdered. I mean, when you think about it, when you think about it, how many black men throughout history have been lynched and mobbed and killed and slaughtered and, you know, just brutalized and humiliated when a white woman yells rape, even when that guy probably wasn't even around them and every white person knew it, but they couldn't wait to go out there and hurt some minority because it was fun. Black people's ears, feet, noses, and other body parts were collected as trophies upon the founding or the attempted founding of this nation and then the founding. It just won't the natives that got brutalized, it was the people brought over from Africa that got brutalized. And you know the common factor happens to be white people. If you don't understand by now, this is why black people cheered OJ getting off. Because out of hundreds of millions of injustifications that go on, we just needed one. Just one. And yes, I will add, OJ is just one dumb brother. He's dumb. He is not bright. Orenthal J. Simpson isn't bright. You know, or maybe we just don't see him as bright because with some things we would just let go. Some things we wouldn't do. And still, every black person out there would say, we know he did it, but we glad he got off. Just like every cop kills and gets off. And maybe three in history has actually been punished for murdering a minority, no matter what that minority is. Just last year, there were three to four black people hung, strangled to death from a tree. What in the world, white people? You don't like this. You don't want to hear this. And you get sick and tired of this. But you don't stop doing the very things that prompt these conversations. It ain't about getting caught. It's about not doing it in the first place. And I'm not now look, it's obvious if you've ever listened to my show, I don't think all white people are bad or this bad. Just the white people that are. Those are the only ones I think that are bad or this bad. You know, that's truly it. You know, you don't want these conversations, then stop. Stop being racist. Stop viewing minorities as beneath you. Because you know the truth. You know the truth. If the minorities are equal and you can't do anything to them, just like you do in your private lives, you'll find a way to ruin your own wives and daughters and sons. And your wives will find a way to ruin families. Because you know what? Hurt people hurt people. And you know what? Damaged people damage people. And every single one of us, because of corporate greed, because of capitalism, because of abusive capitalism, because of wanting to be better than somebody else, and then being afraid of being less than anyone else, we hurt everyone around us so that we don't have to feel so bad. And when we have the ability to be better, 
we are brought down by everyone else who's either so privileged they don't know the wrong they're doing because it's so fun or they just can't help it because they've been so damaged they don't know what else to do to communicate other than to hurt somebody else and if that hurt person can weather their storm and put up with their crap then they get respect and that proliferated so we are a country of traumatized human beings all over the place not admitting our trauma not admitting how messed up we are and all we're trying to do is get over on each other and the majority of people in terms of financial gain and number count that's not part of any other minority group happen to be white people who happens to run this country look at our congress how many of them are white compared to anything else that's the question how do you stop it by just stop being racist allow people to be people stop hurting each other stop hurting yourselves and stop allowing others to hurt you so that they can feel better you know you need to call somebody out it doesn't matter their authority it doesn't matter if they're bigger or taller or whatnot if they have more internet status which i can't believe is a thing i got into an argument with with Villa Blanc, Villa Bianca, and you know what? Don't care. You know why? She's a person. And in my mind, she messed up. I listened to, I haven't listened to the show in a while, but when I did, there were things that angered me, but there are also things I have learned so much. And Villa Bianca is someone that can teach me so much and teach others. But she also needs to learn to communicate, to talk, to actually talk, listen. Think about it. And if she makes a mistake, own up to it. Don't own up to somebody else's mistake. Own up to yours. That's what everyone needs to do. You are responsible for you, your actions, your attitude, your words, and your inactions. You are responsible for you. And you need to act accordingly. It is that simple, people. Just during Obama's time, over 3,000 black people were gunned down. Over 3,000, and that's not even just, I said it's time. It was in under five years. Black people were gunned down. And then when one black dude wants to carry a, 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 a rifle, to protect himself, there's an uproar by white people because the white people are so afraid that if black people, if Hispanic people, and Asians, Islanders, or any minority mixed or pure breed, whatever it is, he, she, they, him, V, E, it don't matter. They are afraid that if anyone gets equal standings, then they will be subjected to the very harsh treatment and ways that they have put on to others. And that is the only true battle in this country. Every single one of you white people, I don't give a damn what social, religious, or political standing or side you are on. I don't care how you feel about yourself. If you think you are a way or not a way. And this goes for you other minorities out there too. This goes for anyone within my voice's reach. Stop. Chill. Stand up. Stand up and don't allow anyone to hurt you or anyone else. And when some minority runs for office, push for that person and make sure that person is the right one don't vote for a color vote for a purpose vote for a policy vote for positive forward thinking change because that's all that truly matters you want a better life you want to stop the murders you want to stop all this you got to vote in the right people and i'm gonna promise you one thing and i stake my life on this those people are not in the red or blue party of the corporate United States.
This has been Cedric Kennedy for Comparative Reasoning. Thank you for listening.